Phlebotomy Solutions presents The Order of Veins. The following is part of the CLSI standards. All right, let's take a look at the order of veins. Just like the order of draw, there is an order of veins that we need to follow when we're attempting to draw blood. So as you can see, we have three major veins we need to look at. The first is the median cubital vein. This is the primary vein we should be looking for when inspecting an arm. Second, if the median cubital vein is not accessible, then we should look second to cephalic vein. Now, in case cephalic vein is not accessible as well, then last, we should consider the basilic vein. The basilic vein should always be considered last when inspecting an arm. Now, if all three veins are not accessible on the arm, then we need to look at the back of the hand. Now, the back of the hand veins are referred to as the dorsal metacarpal veins. Now, with this, there is no specific order to drawing hand veins. Whatever vein you feel comfortable with when inspecting the dorsal metacarpal veins on the back of the hand, then you can attempt to draw any one of those veins. Now, when we're looking at the area to draw, we must remember that this area is called the anticubital fossa area. This area is where all three veins lie, the median cubital, the cephalic, and the basilic veins. Now, I recommend highly to follow this order. First, look for the median cubital, then the cephalic, and then, of course, the basilic. Now, if those three veins are not accessible again, we go to the back of the hand veins, which are referred to as the dorsal metacarpal veins. Then, with the dorsal metacarpal veins, we can look at the wrist area, or where the watch goes. This is the standard order we should follow when inspecting an arm. Now, my recommendation is if the median cubital is not accessible and the cephalic is not accessible, I would definitely skip the basilic vein and go to the back of the hands or the wrist area where the watch goes. And in a minute, we're going to see why that's important, that selecting the basilic vein should always be a last resort if the back of the hands and the wrist veins are not also accessible. And a final note, there are no forearm draws or inside the wrist draws. That is against the standard of care. And again, foot draws are only uh, with an MD approval. So if there are no veins located anywhere in these areas, including the back of the hand and the wrist, then we would get an MD approval for a foot draw. And again, the forearm is not to be considered or the inside of the wrist. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the vein that we need to avoid or even make an attempt on completely last is the basilic vein. Now, the reason for this is because it is near the brachial artery. In fact, the brachial artery runs just underneath the basilic vein. So if you put two fingers over the basilic vein area, you should feel a pulse if you push down hard enough and wait. That is the brachial artery. We want to avoid the basilic vein because it's a higher risk of puncturing the brachial artery. And in fact, we want to avoid any internal bleeding that can occur if if we do puncture that brachial artery. So again, the basilic vein is a last resort, last attempt if all other veins are not accessible, namely the median cubital, cephalic, the back of the hand, or the wrist. Then the basilic vein can be looked for if nothing else is available. And again, we want to avoid doing any kind of harm or damage to the patient. Also, there are nerves that run parallel with the, with the basilic vein that, that if we're not careful, we might uh, nick or hit with a needle can cause nerve damage. So we have a possible high risk of, of arterial puncture and also hitting a nerve or doing nerve damage while trying to access blood from the basilic vein. So again, basilic vein should always be attempted last when all other veins are not accessible for vena puncture. So in conclusion, always follow the order of veins when inspecting the arm the median, cephalic, and basilic vein. This is inspecting both the right and left arm when attempting a vena puncture. Always select basilic last when all other veins, including the hand, are not available to draw. This is again avoiding an arterial puncture and possible nerve damage. Now the back of the hand has no vein order when selecting. The wrist is part of the back of the hand and never draw the forearm or inside the wrist area. So the dorsal metacarpal veins have no specific vein order 
whatever vein you find in the back of the hand and feel comfortable drawing, then make your venipuncture attempt on that vein. And again, never draw the forearm or inside the wrist area. That is against the standard of care. And of course, if nothing is, is accessible on both arms or the hands, then the foot can be considered, but with an MD approval first. Thank you for watching, and remember, Phlebotomy Solutions Volumes 1 through 4 are available in DVDs at Amazon.com.